Hello, and welcome to the Bullcast Podcast. I'm Katie Pickler, and with me is Cameron Spann. Happy almost New Year. Woo! And Court wins it. No, it isn't. <laughs> what? <laughs> we are closing out 2023. This year's kind of flown by, hasn't it? <laughs> Guys, I can only assume that this is because I'm getting up there in age, but this year uh, flew by like so much more rapidly than any previous year in my life. By double, I feel like I just missed so much. And What's weird about that is I spent a considerable portion of this year really super ultra like plugged in. I was a lot more focused on a lot of stuff this year than I have been in the past. And it didn't matter. The the year still flew by. So it's crazy. I'm still trying to adjust to the fact that we're about to close out the year. That's just insane to me. Yeah. In years past, it's been easy to put kind of chapter markers like 2019. I mean, with COVID, that kind of helped. 2020, Mm -hmm. it just seemed like it had chapters in it. Yeah. But 2023 has just been a blur. Yeah. Just fighting for survival over here. And I'm seeing people put together these like, you know, TikToks or Instagram pictures. And it's like all the places I traveled in 2023, all the places. This, and I'm like, whoa, there's been a lot that's been crammed into Y'all this year. Have, think about all the places you've gone this year. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I know just me, myself, I've taken business trips to uh, New York, Boston, Colorado. You know, I've taken a personal vacation to New Zealand all in 2023. All, yeah. all of that. It was in 2023. It's crazy. Well, and I've heard a lot of people say this year that they feel like it's flown by. And I think it's because we're kind of getting back to normal mm. in the sense that, like, you're having all the holiday parties, you're having all the events, you're having everything that... COVID kind of took away. And so I think it's just like everybody's moving fast. You know, you're busy, dialed into things Mm -hmm. and time is just flying by because it's been a lot of good stuff. But I always struggle to kind of look back and see everything that's happened because I had somebody the other day talk to me and they're like, well, when did you finish your master's? I'm like, oh, that was like a year ago, right? And that was July. Mm -hmm. Like that was not that long ago. Yeah. But so much thing. And I think it's good To take a half a second back and look at what you've accomplished this year, Cam and I notoriously have talked about how we are terrible about when we finish an event, it's always like moving to the next thing. And that's, I think that's what's kind of crazy. And I'll do that with trips too. It's like, well, I finished this trip. Like, what's the next trip? Or you look at what's the next deadline? Like my mom, super mom has decorated 34 trees Mm -hmm. this holiday season And now it's like, well, now I've got to help her get 34 trees down (laughs) and all the Christmas decorations down. I have a bad problem. And I think a lot of people are in this boat of you're constantly looking at the next thing. Mm -hmm. Okay, we did this, but then we got to do this. And I'm like, okay, we'll get Christmas down. And then you're preparing for Mardi Gras and Valentine's Day. And then before you know it, it's, you know, I'm starting to prep for Italian Fest. And then there's this, and you know, if I got a wedding I'm in. and It can be hard to celebrate. Like you said, take a step back, celebrate successes, the little wins, be- mm-hmm. especially when you're busy in life. You know, yeah. you're always moving to the next thing. Yeah. But I like when I can to sit back and be like, wow, that was nice. Kind of soak in your success. You yeah. know, I may actually try and do that this year of kind of like look back, especially since and I wish I had listened to you, Cam. I am. Um, I'm terrible about posting pictures and stuff on social media. I really found that out this year that I'd be like, oh, well, I'll wait and post these pictures. And now I'm just so far behind. I haven't posted pictures from my London Paris trip in June. And then it's like so much has happened since then because I went on the Disney cruise with the girls. You know, we had our Wild West trip. We've had a lot of stuff come up since then. Daniel and I went on an anniversary trip to Charleston. Um, Savannah. I don't even know where the hell I went. (laughs) Clearly, I need to go back and look at the pictures, but it's like a snowball and I got so overwhelmed. I'm like, well, what am I supposed to do? Like highlight and go backwards. But now would be a perfect time for me to be like, here's a snapshot of all this stuff I did Mm -hmm. in 2023. Of course, internal me is like, I don't want to be braggy and like, oh, I did all this stuff this year. Mm. Because then it seems like, oh, that's all I did was fun. But maybe I can also post the positive because I don't think I ever posted on my personal social media that I got my master's. Yeah, I watched a, uh, a Netflix Christmas movie the other day, and the the basic foundation of it was one woman who was married got a one of those year end newsletters from another woman, and oh, I watched was, that. Yeah, and so she was she was kind of like you know nobody has a life that perfect because you know those year end newsletters make everything seem to be yeah uh, you know wonderful and great. If you're gonna post all your pictures and put, talk about your masters and everything, you gotta you gotta be careful because there might be somebody out there that's. <laughs> 
<laughs> Did you watch to the end? Yeah. 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 That was a good story. Because mm-hmm. I thought it was going to be really cheesy and then it's it turned out really good. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I don't mind a little cheese with my Christmas movies. Yeah. But... No, it's you kind of get a pass with that. But yeah. I agree that it's a uh, Ferris Bueller in my head right now, you know. Life's moving fast. You got to stop and look around every once in a while or some, something. Isn't that the yeah, yeah. That's the gist? Yeah. <laughs> but it's that's good enough. <laughs> it's good that this is a universal time where everyone's looking back at what they accomplished this year, thinking about what they want to do this year that maybe they didn't accomplish, and pre planning what they want to accomplish in 2024. So obviously we are a wealth advising firm that is very much built on financial planning and planning of all kinds and then a law firm, estate planning. So we have a bunch of planners around here. Yeah. And I can tell you, we already are pre-planning 2024, all of our client events, all of our different um, trips and milestones, different um, conferences, ways for us to keep making sure we're being the absolute best for you guys. And so um, it's an interesting time, but it's also a soul searching time for sure. But let's uh, let's get into a fun little segment. Go ahead, Court. X Nugs. Formerly known as Twitter Nugs. <laughs> so funny and relatable tweets about New Year's resolutions. Cam. Startup idea, a gym named Resolution that runs for the first month of the year, collects subscription fees, then converts to a bar named Regret. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, yeah. The gym advertisements start for sure. Okay. My New Year's resolution is to stop procrastinating. I'll start tomorrow. (laughs) This year, my New Year's resolution is to learn the difference between being bored and being hungry. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) New Year, new me is a funny thing to say while committing identity theft. Oh, God. (laughs) I'm not really a New Year's resolutions person. I'm more of a get really motivated to change my whole life at 3 a.m. on a Tuesday person. Mm. Accurate. So accurate. My New Year's resolution was to lose 10 pounds, and I'm ending the year with only 17 to go. <laughs> uh, that's the opposite for you for this year. No, no, steal my thunder. We've, oh, got, a, we've sorry, got a whole, excuse like, me, sorry. personal review of okay, res- okay, yeah, okay, resolutions okay. past. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I have decided to leave my past behind me, so if I owe you money, I'm sorry, but I've <laughs> moved on. Okay, and my New Year's resolution is to figure out how to squeeze a fourth and fifth meal into my day. <laughs> Is this like a... Like a hobbit. Hobbits, mm-hmm. yeah. Remember like Taco Bell used to advertise like the fourth meal and fifth meal or something like that? Didn't they? Uh, it's distinctly possible. I feel Maybe like... even as a tie-in to hobbits. I don't know. No, it was <laughs> like, I think like, because they were open till like midnight or 1 a.m. Mm-hmm. But it was like, get your fourth meal in or something. Yeah. Okay, so... Breakfast, first lunch, second lunch. <laughs> This is the bull cast highs and lows of 2023. So not us personally, but our family, our bull cast family. Mm-hmm. So a high that I want to definitely point out is, you know, Nicole technically joined us 2022. Two. Mm-hmm. But I really think she's been a great addition to um, our bull cast family this year. She's really phenomenal. Yeah, she's really been super helpful. So that's definitely um, a high. That's a plus. Yeah. Okay, low, I think we'll just go ahead and get the low out of the way. We could only really think of one low, and that is, yo, guys, the struggle is real. (laughs) (laughs) We were so fortunate to kick this off when we had some time to record. It was sort of a project that we could use to fill some time because we had spare time because we were in the middle of COVID. And uh, that was, we, we got this thing off the ground and we got it running and we committed to doing a new episode every week and it was great. And then things got back to normal. So that's kind of a plus. Things got back to normal. And in fact, in our case, for, for Pickler Wealth Advisors, we've seen tremendous growth over the past three years since COVID started. That's a plus, you know, uh, but with growth comes a, a lot less time to be doing things like recording a podcast. We've really had to shift gears, uh, pivot, if you will, to, <laughs> pivot! to to make sure that we're still able to record. That's meant uh, having a few more guests, which is always a plus. I was thinking it was just this year that we had uh, our guest Aaron Gruel. But I mean, you know, we've had multiple guests like that. And actually, we've got guests scheduled out into 2024 now because 
It helps having a guest if we're if one of our team members is down. We've also obviously started rotating in Nicole some when one of us can't be on. So we still are committed to all three of us being on the podcast, but it helps to have somebody that you can rotate in when one of us has to rotate out. And just on a personal note, I would be absolutely excoriated by my daughter if I didn't mention that even, you know, every now and then Cakey still calls oh, yeah. in and, <laughs> yeah. uh, and has input on the podcast as well. So We um, have some regular guests for yeah, sure. Yeah. This, this has been the year of guests. I feel like this year we've had more guests than years past. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's another one of my highlights was uh, our on the road episode. Even with the iPhone in the Wild West, we still <laughs> knocked out an episode. And it was Sheridan. A, a gr- yeah, Sheridan, Wyoming, a great guest being Dave. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, while that was a low that our time to do this has been limited a little bit more, we've been able to pivot because we do have a commitment to mm-hmm. really keep doing this. There have been multiple times where, um, you know, we've talked about, do we need to just like repeat an old episode or do we need to just do a, you know, skip a week? And mm-hmm. we, I'll be proud of us. We have not skipped a week at all. Yeah. We have stayed consistent. Um, now, if you've listened to all 180 something of our episodes, you may be thinking to yourself, well, I wish you had skipped a week, <laughs> but not every episode is for everybody. As David Pickler has frequently pointed out to us, some of the, some of our episodes go right over his head. But as long as the content isn't objectionable, there's somebody out there that is probably getting something from it. And ultimately, our goal is to inform and to educate. So as long as we're informing and educating somebody, we're doing what we're setting out to do. And if we're entertaining as well, then Yahtzee. Another high, we um, when we were in New York, was that November? Then we were there because our podcast was nominated mm-hmm. for yeah. the... Think Advisors Luminaries? Luminaries, that's right. We were a thought leader. We were a nominee as thought leader. We're thought leaders, you guys. thoughtful. Yeah, and it was a thrill to be nominated. We were nominated amongst some very very big big companies. And uh, we were nominated amongst companies who were doing similar things like a podcast, but their podcast was just for their employees. So like they were they were yeah. distributing like 3000 downloads per week, but it was just for employees. So that's the, that's the size of the competitors we were up against and we got to go to New York to g- attend the ceremony and that was an absolute high. That was for yeah. sure a high. It was a great uh, great event for sure. Did y'all feel a little bit like we almost needed a camera on us cuz I felt like we we were just a little bit of a different character than some of the other people there. Oh, yeah. Like we were kind of the if it was an SNL skit, we were the kind of oh those are the podcast people over there. They're because like, <laughs> like at one point I was like we should just like bust into like doing an episode in the middle of the dinner. Yeah, I feel like our table definitely <laughs> <laughs> thought we were was amused. <laughs> That's yeah. a good word. Yeah. We were entertaining our table for sure. Yeah. Um, this banter doesn't go away just because the microphones do. Uh, no. I guess that, I guess that's the thing. <laughs> We're real. <laughs> Another high is we moved into and settled in our new studio. Indeed, it yeah, is. and that has been great. It, um, the it's studio awesome. has been really, really. I mean, people, you cannot imagine when we used to record in a library in a building that had little to no sound insulation, very, very high ceilings, hardwood floors, sound just carried throughout the building. And also we had some people that were able to project their voices over long (laughs) distances. So we were frequently having to pause our recordings. just Quiet on the set. (laughs) Just to ask people very nicely if they could uh, quiet down so that we could finish our recording. And And I don't think we've had to ask people here one time. No, no. And not just for recording, but the studio is great for me. It's like an editing bay for me. Yeah. Because I spend hours and hours editing this podcast for Mm -hmm. our listeners. And it's nice to have a dedicated space that's quiet and it's awesome. 100%. All right. Should we move on? Is that enough highs? Let me talk about one last high. And I am joking here a little bit. You can't these days uh, spend any time on the streets of New York without thinking that you might be getting a little high. (laughs) (laughs) That's all I smelled in New York. I mean, it's it's changed a lot. There are a lot of dispensaries up in New York. So if y'all go up there and you don't like that smell, then Uh, you might want to be be careful. Okay, so we're going into 2024. Um, Some big things that are going to be happening in 2024. It's a leap year. Did y'all know it's a leap year? Uh, You know, that makes sense because it's every four years. Yep. Abby told me the other day about that. So it's a leap year. The Summer Olympics will happen in 2024 in Paris. Mm -hmm. We have an election happening. 
presidential election happening oh in November. Yeah. Yep. That's going to be good. It's always fun. Uh, May- it should be interesting. We're, maybe we're... we need to do um, another debate about our fictitious presidents. Mm. Um, we'll do all different people than we did last time. Obviously. But yeah. that would be a lot of fun. I just picture like Celebrity Deathmatch from um, MTV. Oh, yeah. So good. There's also going to be a total solar eclipse in April. Yeah. We have friends that live in the, I guess, the, the epicenter like, yeah. of the total eclipse. So Russellville, Arkansas. Yeah, that'll be pretty cool. And the last kind of like big thing happening in 2024 is going to be SpaceX will have tourists going to Mars. Whoa. They haven't announced a date, but that's supposed to happen in 2024. SpaceX has announced that they are going to launch to Mars in 2024. Uh I wonder how long that flight is. I had not heard that, but that is... uh, That's what the interwebs say. So, mm, you know, you can always trust the interwebs. Absolutely. If there are two things you can trust in the world, it's the internet and Elon Musk. So, gosh. Oh, goodness. Or just, you know, do your own research. <laughs> okay. Five smart New Year's money resolutions to make for 2024. Because, again, despite some of our episodes that are a little kind of off the wall, we are a financial podcast. We are trying to give nice little nuggets and tidbits for you. So, five moves that you could make. Okay. Move some of your savings to a certificate of deposit. So are oftentimes called a CD. Mm -hmm. While traditional savings accounts offer safety, they often come with minimal interest rates that may not keep up with inflation. So rather than settling for a low interest rate on your savings, consider diversifying and allocating a portion to a CD. Okay, what this doesn't say that I got to add in here, the difference, though, a CD is tying your money up. Mm -hmm. You've got to make sure you consider that. And so while I'm not telling every single person listening, hey, if you've got extra money in your savings, put it in a CD. No, 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 no. I'm not telling you that. It may be okay in your certain position to do that with a portion of your money. But you need to make sure you've covered your emergency fund. You've got that three to six months worth of living expenses in liquid cash between your checking your savings account you can get your hands on. Then if you wanted to, you could explore the options of a CD, look at what the interest rates are offering, but you need to know that those have different terms. And so it could be that that money, you can't touch it for six months, a year, various different terms. So that's where just, it may fit for you. It may not. Mm-hmm. Those That's an option. So I would suggest to you, if you're interested in it, Ask your financial professional, ask somebody to help look at your situation and see, does it fit? We still have some decent interest rates right now because of uh, the work the Fed did to to try and put a stop to inflation. So uh, while those interest rates are are up, banks are offering decent interest rates, but you can also get some good interest rates on some other securities and so forth. It doesn't tie it up. Yeah. Um, So it's uh, like, for instance, another option would be a higher yield. It's basically a savings account, but it's a, a, a money market market account, uh, something like that, that has a little bit higher yield than what your bank might offer. That is another option to your normal savings account. You're still going to stay relatively liquid, but you are possibly generating a little bit more income for your money. With everything, read the fine print Mm. because high yield savings accounts, you may go, oh, well, I'm getting 5% in that high yield savings account. What is the term? What is the standard that this company has set? Because they may set it where we guarantee 5%, which number one in our world guarantee doesn't exist, Mm -hmm. but they may say- Neither does peace of mind. Yeah, neither does that. (laughs) Peace of mind, guarantee, we can't say that because we can't. (gasps) You just said it. I know, I know. Bite my tongue. You're Um, killing me. (laughs) (laughs) You've got to look at the fine print of that because it could be that they say, oh, we'll have this interest rate locked in for this period of time. And Mm -hmm. then it can fluctuate based on what's going on in the market, based on that. And so with everything, it's good to constantly have a checkup and understand because moving funds is not always the best practice, but it could be one of those take advantage of situations. If right now a bank is offering you a high yield savings, that's going to get you three, four, five percent. That's great. But make sure you check on it. And there may be a time where it drops down to point five. Mm -hmm. And so then at that point, it's like, okay, what's the best use of your money? Where's the best opportunity for it to grow? And so the biggest thing is I hope you go into 2024 being aware of your funds and either you are personally involved with looking at it and checking on it, or you get a financial partner to help you really be an advocate to make sure you're getting the best bang for your buck and the money's working as hard for you 
as it possibly can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so not to hammer upon a deceased bi-quadruped equine animal. Where is this going? Beat a dead horse. Beat a dead horse. (laughs) Not to beat a dead horse, but number three is create a budget and stick to it. And Uh, We have told you all a billion times that budgeting is good. We have episodes about it. Uh, Track your spending, get a good record of where your money is going, figure out where you actually need your money to be going, and if some of your spending is not necessary, then cut it out. Make a list of where your expenditure should should go, create a budget, and then stick to it. And I guess sticking to it is probably often, That's like, for the instance, part. I, I know people that just absolutely love to make a budget, but then sticking to it is, is a yeah. completely different question. And if you're utilizing credit cards for the majority of your expenses, which, you know, are always great because they kind of help with fraud and things like that because it's easier than it's them getting your bank account, a lot of the credit cards I've noticed recently – have really advanced their tools on where your money's going mm-hmm. and helping you with budgeting. But I personally just finished um, yesterday doing a quick, like I, I went on my credit card statements, downloaded the year report and itemized what the different things were and found a couple of subscriptions. Like I was paying for a chat GPT subscription. I haven't used chat GPT in like three months. Mm. Yeah, that's $22. But that's not like a ton. $22 but a month? A month. That's more than Netflix. That's, yeah. That's ridiculous. So, like, so like, I'm like, cancel that. Yeah. And so that was a Although, good. I, I've actually considered getting a chat GPT subscription because I do use it quite a bit. See, and mm. that's, I'm just not using it right now. Mm. I was using it a good bit when I was in my master's program just to kind of help me formulate, mm. you know, hey, make this sentence sound you better had or something it like that. writing your papers. I did yeah, not. Don't lie. I did <laughs> not. <laughs> Uh, but I just kind of did a purging of kind of like, hey, where's all my money going? What are some subscriptions that I'm not using anymore mm-hmm. that I can get rid of? Yeah. Yeah. And I probably need to do the same thing. Another thing, another cool thing that credit cards let you do is, and this isn't one of our pointers, but just as a sort of a side note, cool things that credit cards have started adding as as features. Uh, a lot of the credit cards, I think every single one of the credit cards that I have offers uh, offers me regular updates on my credit score. Yeah. On anything, if my credit score has gone up or down, it lets me know. It lets me know what my credit score is, which I think is cool because it, you used to have to go jump through a mm-hmm. lot of hoops to mm-hmm. be able to get your credit score or your credit uh, report. And it's getting easier and easier to do. So if you are not familiar with what your credit score is, I suggest you familiarize yourself with it because it can affect a lot. We did an episode on that, too. Yep. Okay, next one. Cameron, you want to take it? Of course. It would be investing in your financial knowledge. Would that be financial literacy? Yeah. yeah. Uh, this is I gave it to you. <laughs> yeah, one resolution that could benefit you in the new year is investing time and expanding your financial literacy. There it is. By reading books, Katie, attending workshops, <laughs> court, or taking online courses. I guess me. <laughs> <laughs> Understanding the intricacies of investing, taxes, and personal finance can empower you to make informed decisions that align with your long-term goals. Guys, I think this is what you call sharpening the saw. Yep. You know, you could count that. It says reading books, attending workshops, or taking online courses, or listening to Bullcast Podcast. Mm. <gasps> do we offer CE to our <laughs> listeners? No, we oh, do Oh, I'm not. getting myself in trouble. <laughs> oh, yeah, we do. Sorry, compliance. We do not offer CE, unfortunately. No, no but, but it's, I mean, again, it's we tell people all the time if there's something going on in the world or something that we have not touched on send us a topic because probably if you're questioning it and thinking about it there's others that are doing the same we're going to continue to try and make these episodes more knowledgeable about what's going on in the world but also experiences we're having with our clients and obviously not you know talking about our particular clients and telling you hey that's Susie doing this over there but their experiences, what they're going through to share to help others. I know that all three of us have discussed uh, wanting to expand our knowledge base next year. We all are considering classes or uh, new certifications, um, seminars, uh, things like that that are applicable to the jobs that we do. And uh, I know that all all three of us are probably going to come with some new knowledge next mm-hmm. year that mm-hmm. we will be able to share with you our Dear listeners, we're coming back stronger than ever. Yeah, we may have to have amazing. a little segment each episode that's like knowledge drop or like dropping oh, some knowledge. Dropping, dropping some knowledge. <laughs> drop, dropping like some it. bullets. I don't know. <laughs> <Dropping> <laughs> bullets. I don't know. Unloading <laughs> a clip. <laughs> <laughs> I was 
I don't, I don't know. Okay. Uh, finally, review and update your insurance policies. Life is unpredictable. You might die, so have insurance. I'm going to add to that, like, check your estate planning documents. Check your financial yes. plan. Always like, a good time. Things like that. You know, just kind of gut check everything. Gut check, yes. Um, one of the articles that PWA recently posted online was an article about four things that adult children should talk to their parents about over the holidays. So if you didn't manage it at Christmas time, then maybe uh, check out that article and then uh, cover those topics with your parents uh, for the new year. You, you know. can find that at PicklerWealthAdvisors.com. Advisors of the know. <laughs> Not a need. There, that's the first time in book has history he's been a part of that little last, <laughs> last thing. <laughs> to be fair. You uh, lead it, and then Katie and I kind of like trickle off. In the first few episodes, the reason y'all started doing that is because in the first few episodes, I was obsessed with saying that's advisors with an O, not an E. And then y'all started jumping we in and it saying in. it instead of I me. I forgot about yep. that. Because yeah. for a long time, I thought that advisors with an O was how you spelled advisors. And I thought that if you spelled it with an E, it was spelled, it was a misspelling. And it turns out it's not. It can be spelled mm-hmm. with an E, which is why I became obsessed with saying that's advisors with an O, not an E. And then there's a lot of words like that, like theater spelled E R or R E. Mm-hmm. Makes it fancy if it's and, R-E. Yeah. yeah. Center. Yeah. Yeah. And then there's that whole British thing of adding in U's when uh, when the word ends in O R. In American English, it ends O R, and in, in English English, I guess British English, O-U-R. It, like, O-U-R. like color. Yeah, color, honor, yeah. you know, things like that. honor. Fun. It's like a book. You're closing one chapter, moving to the next chapter. Mm-hmm. There isn't some. We talked about this last year on the New Year's resolution we did. There's not some magic reset button that happens. You're still going into 2024 with all that credit card debt that you racked up on Christmas presents. So you can't run away from that. Mm -hmm. I mean, what you did in the past is going to be with you in the future. And so it's just this is a time for a lot of people mentally of a reset or a, you know, let's try and set new goals. And what my biggest pet peeve is, it's one of those like set the New Year's resolution. But if you don't want to start it. January 1, then you can have a New Year's resolution that starts January 15th, February 2nd. It doesn't matter. Like, for instance, a lot of times I do not really so much a a New Year's resolution, but a lot of times I do dry January. You know, you've you've heard of this. Dry January is that people a lot of times will uh, abstain from alcohol uh, for the month of January. And yeah, usually my dry January started on January 2nd because yeah. <laughs> January 1st, there was football to be watched and beer to yeah. be had and so forth. You but, had a dry like Oh, I had August a dry several months. Or September or something. It was dry it was, first quarter. Yeah. yeah. It, it was two and a half months. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, actually, we'll get to that because one of the things that we were going to discuss as, as kind of our roundup for this episode, our bullseye, if you will, was going to be discussing New Year's resolutions from last year and how those worked out. Katie, you've already sort of teased two of my big New Sorry. Year's resolutions for last year. And actually, to be completely honest, it's been my New Year's resolution for several years in a row. And up until this year, they were always utter and complete failures. But this year, I actually managed to uh, lose around 40 pounds and sig- Let's go. significantly Woo-hoo. decrease the amount that I drink. I, I actually took about two and a half months off from drinking, and I was just absolutely amazed and impressed with the health benefits that I experienced eliminating alcohol entirely. I, I, my sleep was better. My heart rate was lower. I think I even lost a little more weight. My blood pressure went down. Um, I, my anxiety level went down. There were a lot of things that alcohol was contributing to that – Um, When I eliminated it entirely, there was a noticeable difference. I have sort of reintroduced alcohol for the the holidays. I have a drink here or there, but I'm still trying to maintain some regulation over the total amount that I consume because I know what those health benefits are now and I know what it feels like to have those health benefits and I want to keep it going. Uh, That uh, that was a big one for me. That was uh, just sort of an eye-opening experience, but also the uh, weight loss. Weight loss has been a thing that I wanted to do for several Several years now. I'm mean, talking like six or seven years now that I've been wanting to lose weight, and I finally did it in 2023. So, yay, go court. Yay, me. Woo. Good job, baby. Boom. Well, so court wasn't on our episode when we did it our was just resolutions because Kate, well, and you're going to be on it for this that Cam and I last year we did 
like resolutions and we did kind of like some fun ones because mm-hmm. we said we wanted to read more. Mm-hmm. And then I had like, I wanted to learn how to French braid. Right. How's the reading going? <laughs> well, I read a lot of educational books for my master's, but I only read two personal kind of fun books for myself. And I'm not happy about that. They were, you know, at the end of the year and I haven't really, I think we set the goal of two. Well, you hit it. Yeah, but, you know, I like, I want to overachieve. I want to do more. And so uh, that's one I'm not happy about. The French braiding is getting better. Thankfully, my little niece, Cora, is totally fine with just sitting there and letting me play with her hair. And I tried to, on the Wild West trip, French braid my hair myself. And it looked okay. It was a little messy, but I just had to learn how to do it. It didn't have to be pretty. Yeah, you have to start somewhere. Yeah, and so again, if anybody's got any pointers, I'd love for y'all to help me. Talk to my daughter. That. Yeah, which one? The younger. Okay, so this year, um, I don't know if there are resolutions or not, but I did complete the masters. So I was pretty excited about that. I've just continued to feel like I'm becoming much more confident in what I'm doing and really growing in my skill sets here at work. I do know that one thing I want to try and do. I'll go ahead and throw this out now. My resolution for 2024. I really want to work harder on finding that decompression thing, whether it's reading a book or like, I know people talk all the time about like, oh, yoga is so therapeutic. I love doing yoga or I'll, you know, take a bath. Like I just haven't found my thing that's like your zen, my zen. So if you got any ideas, let me know, because it's just like younger me, competitive dance and like my therapy outlet would be going in the studio, putting on some music and like choreographing a dance to a new song. I lost myself in that and didn't think about anything else but that. But I have yet to find my thing that's like, I'm shutting my brain down. I'm going to focus on this. So that's, that's a big 2024 goal. That's cool. Yeah. From last year, I think I read six books this year. Overachiever. So I tripled the goal. Six and does you, not sound like a lot, but that's a lot to me. But you really like it now, right? I I put up with it. <laughs> no, it's it's fine. I still struggle finding... When, when I sit still to read, I'm like, no, I'd rather be doing something else. But yeah. I managed to do it six times. And one of those was an audiobook, but I guess that counts, right? It counts. 100% counts. It As counts. a matter of fact, I had a conversation with a friend of mine who was talking about... The fact that if audiobooks didn't count as reading, then there are a lot of people, especially vision challenged people, who wouldn't be able to say that they read because the way that they read is by listening to audiobooks. So yeah. it is a perfectly valid way of reading. And it just so happens that you can read and get something else done at the same time. So, yeah. 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 I got better at saying no to people. That's something we discussed last year. Um, I'm not perfect at it, but I have found that when I say no to people, whether that be personal favors, family stuff, or even just like, hey, we'd like you to join this board or something. And to just have the power to say no, I feel at ease. And that's huge, yeah. huge for me. Because I was really struggling with anxiety about um, just being overloaded, my plate being too full. Are we talking about goals for next year? Oh. I mean, I already kind of did one of them, so yeah. I want to get better at video production. Mm-hmm. Finally made our first video here at awesome. Pickler Wealth Advisors. And that it felt good to make the first one. Get that out of the way. Uh, I felt like I'm in the Matrix. You know how they plug in and learn how to like fly a helicopter? That's what I do, but for YouTube, you know, I'm like, how do I do this on this program? <laughs> and learn it real quick. Um, so that's cool. Uh, I want to travel with the family, either Europe or Disney next year. Mm-hmm. It's a huge goal, big time. We've never really traveled with the kiddos like far And I think that'd be fun to do. But I got to talk with my financial advisors about that. (laughs) And You know where to find us. That's right. Uh, uh, Health. Everybody says health, but uh, not just weight, but just like sometimes my back hurts. You know, I get back injuries and just being a little more limber, stretch out, maybe yoga. That'd be cool. Maybe we can start doing like bull cast yoga. (laughs) You've heard of goat yoga. What about bull yoga? Boy. Oh. Uh, And then uh, lastly, just keep saying, it sounds so negative, keep saying no, but like where appropriate, have the power to say, not now. Well, I'm going to add that as a 2024 goal for me, because I'm really proud of you for doing that. And I know like you and I both have struggled with that. And it's, it's so hard. And there's other people in our office that I'd love to help to jump on this bandwagon for 2024 as well, that it's, 
you feel guilty if you say no, because somebody has come to you and asked you to help. But I saw a quote, I think it's Elon Musk, like first wife or something like that, that said the reason why he's so successful is he learned how to say no. Mm. And that's where in order for you to be really good at certain things, you've got to protect your time and protect your talents and be very careful on what you're doing. Like right now I'm toying with something that somebody wants me to help with. It would be a pretty big commitment. And in the back of my mind, I'm like, you know, I love the cause. I want to help them. But also like I'm hoping 2024 is going to be more of a year where I really work on sharpening my saw, but I also work on getting my balance going into this, you know, career and really hopefully being successful. I've got to invest some time in me a little bit. And I feel like that is going to make it really hard to do both. So I think kind of having that peace with yourself and maybe having your own internal checklist of like, should I do this? Should I not? (laughs) Or for my case, consult with my bullcast team and tell get them to tell me if I should do it or not. The brain trust. Because court has no problem saying no to me. Oh, one hundred percent. Yeah, I, I can say no for other people uh, all the time. It's it's very easy for me to tell other people they need to say no. Yeah. I think my problem was I'm a people pleaser. I think yep. you are too. Mm-hmm. And I always feared if I say no, they'll lose confidence in me. Yeah. They won't approach me with another cool opportunity. And I, that was my biggest fear. But you know what? If they're good people in your life, they will come back, you know, when you're in a better place. Yeah. Court, did you say your goals for this next year? No. Uh, no, I managed to avoid that. Well, we're coming back around to <laughs> yeah, you. Yeah, what are your goals? Uh, well, obviously, I want to maintain the weight loss. Um, that it, it does me no good to have lost all this weight if I don't maintain it. Um, I'm going to continue to try and pursue healthier avenues of living just generally in terms of what I put in my body. And also, and I need to get back to exercising. And for me, a, a big element of exercise is going to always be running. That is my my, Your happy place? Yeah. So I, I need to get back to that. I think it will help me mentally uh, deal with all the other stuff that's going on in my life if I have that running. And along those lines, you know, there are some little things like um, Robin and I are going to volunteer at the New York Marathon next year because we found that that is a, a, a worthwhile experience. Even if I can't run in the race, if I'm just there volunteering, it's just super fun. And I'm going to get another license. <laughs> He just likes gobbling them up. I do. I like gobbling them up. And so uh, there is going to be that that aspect of, of self-improvement. But also one thing that I've been saying for years that I wanted to do that I have never gotten around to doing, and I'm not sure exactly how successful I'm going to be at it, but I'm going to give it a shot. So I'm going to buy like Rosetta Stone and learn Mandarin. and Mandarin? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've always wanted to learn Mandarin. I don't know why. But uh, with the Chinese taking over the world, I figure it's a good language to understand. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. I got to think about what my random one's going to be because it's like, you know, I had the French braiding one, which was just like totally random. But um, I don't know. Maybe uh, I'll figure it out. And so our next episode, I may be able to tell you what my random one is mm. that I've come up with. You got a random one, Cam? Uh, stay off of nicotine. I quit the nicotine this year for life insurance purposes. I didn't smoke, didn't dip. It was just little nicotine pouches in the lips, and I got real dependent on it, you know, through stress. It was always nice to pop one in, and it mm. just kind of chills you out at your desk. But quit those, and I'm rocking and rolling. But it was a tough, miserable two weeks when I quit. Mm. Awful. Yeah. Both of you know that I'm an ex-smoker, and it's the hardest thing I ever did was quit smoking. And I guarantee you, somebody lit a cigarette and put it in my mouth, I could be back to smoking a pack a day in an hour. It would not take much for me to to fall off that wagon. So I I have to exercise constant vigilance (laughs) in terms of remaining a non-smoker. But I mean, you know, I've been smoke-free for 13 years. Wow. Any day, any day, I feel like I could very easily go back to that habit. It is a tough one to kick. So congratulations to everybody out there that either has quit smoking or has decided that that's going to be your New Year's resolution this year. You have my full support, full backing, and uh, yay you. I just thought of three bad habits that I should probably try and work on, but I'm like, nope. Not gonna like limit caffeine. Nope. Try not to run till E on gas. Nope. Mm. <laughs> Try not let laundry build up. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> like these are all just like nope. I mean, you know, the the whole <laughs> going to E on gas, that seems like a simple that, that that seems like a pretty easy bad habit to kick. If you're gonna choose one, that that seems like it takes the least. So the car I'm driving right now, there's an app on it that can tell you the gas gauge. Daniel this morning showed me, he goes, 
if you're driving to Arlington to go to Cora's birthday party, you got to fill up before you go. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. I need I need someone monitoring my gas light. <laughs> oh, goodness. Okay. Well, um, this was kind of just a wrap up kind of episode about the new year. Hope that 2023 has been a great year for you. But also, if it was a crappy year, it's okay. Figure out what you can learn from it. See, you know, what you want to change differently in 2024. And don't be bummed out. Like, Court, you mentioned that movie. Don't be discouraged or bummed out if you see somebody posting, like, all the stuff they accomplished in 2023. Because I promise you, for every positive post that you see out there, there's a ton of stuff that happened that people aren't talking about. Because our social media presence that's put out into the world is all positive, positive, positive. And very rarely do people put kind of the bad stuff that happened. Everybody has their struggles. And one of the lines from that movie that I thought was interesting was, what about proving that this person is not as happy as they say they are is going to make your life any better? And, and, And similarly, I guarantee you these people are not telling you about all of their problems. So don't judge yourself based on someone else's life. Judge yourself on your own happiness uh, and on improving yourself and your life. Don't worry about what everybody else is doing. They're not judging you. Well, some some people might be judging you, but it shouldn't matter to you what they're thinking. All that should matter to you is, are you staying happy? Are you staying healthy? And are you staying successful? And yep. with that, I think you're on the way to success. Yep. We're hyping you up. Y'all are all awesome. You listen to us and uh, put up with us for all these years so far. So many years. It's been, I mean, it's crazy to think back of how we started this, how much we've changed. And thank you to the listeners who've been with us since the beginning. Thank you to the new ones that have jumped on. We're honored to get to do this every week and record a new episode. I love my team. Uh, These guys are amazing and really absolutely um, some of my best friends in this world. And that's the ultimate thing I'd say going into your next year is that support system around you, whether it's friends, family, financial professionals, legal professionals, tax professionals, just surround yourself with a good team and a team that's going to hype you up and help you when you're down and keep you going when you're up. <laughs> so beautiful, Katie. <laughs> Shut up. Love you too. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, before this devolves into a session of us singing Kumbaya, (laughs) we're going to close it out. Yep, there's the closing bell. Ladies and gentlemen, you've made it to the end of yet another episode of the Bullcast Podcast. If you liked what you heard and you'd like to hear more, please feel free to go to your favorite subscription service and sign up to have our podcast beam directly to your listening device every single Thursday at noon. If you'd like to find out more about us or our podcast, you can go to our website. That's bullcastpodcast.com. We have a mechanism there where you can leave a comment. A mechanism. Yes, it's a mechanism. You can leave a comment, suggest a topic you'd like to hear us talk about, suggest a guest, or just, you know, shoot the breeze with us. We'll clap back at you if you if you send us something. <laughs> um, if you like pictures, we do have pictures on Instagram. Our Instagram handle is at Bullcast Podcast, and we do have a handle on X that is also at Bullcast Podcast. We have a page on Facebook. Come interact with our Facebook page. That's Bullcast The Podcast. And uh, finally, ladies and gentlemen, we've actually mentioned quite a few times this episode that we work at a place called Pickler Wealth Advisors. And if you'd like like to find out more about us, because our bios are up there too, more about what we can do for you, more about our amazing team, and more about our boss, David Pickler, then please feel free to go to that website. That is picklerwealthadvisors.com. That's advisors with an O. Not an E. Ladies and gentlemen, I have given you everything you need to go forth into the new year and be merry. So for now, I'm Court. I'm Katie. I'm Cam. And we're happy. 